What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings, Martha Messenger. We're back in another video. This one's going to be about how to meditate on God's word. Uh, I've been talking about this in my live streams lately, and a lot of people have been asking me, you know, how do, how do I meditate on God's word? And I'm going to be sharing you how to meditate on God's word. And what the world teaches you to meditate, you know, to do yoga, uh, you know, go in nature, which is nothing wrong with going in nature, but what meditation is, is very, very simple. The Bible is so, so simple, okay? And... When, it, when God is instructing us to do certain things, it's not hard. It's not complicated. You could literally do it anywhere, okay? When it comes to meditating, you could meditate in your shower when you're taking a shower. You can meditate right before you're about to sleep. Uh, you don't have to put up the 666 hand sign. You don't have to be in a you know certain pose. You know, People don't even understand there's origins behind what the world teaches you about yoga, which you should do your research. It stands from the Hindu religion. But anyways, you don't have to do any of that. You could literally just be, like I could just be right here and meditate, you know? like. You could, so meditation is very simple. And uh, one thing that I learned from meditating on God's word is that it gives me peace. I'm, I'm gonna be going over that too. It gives me peace, it gives me clarity, and it helps me center my mind on God and Christ. So I feel like everyone should be meditating day and night. And there's some scriptures I could back up. This is in Joshua chapter one, verse eight it says, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that that may observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make that way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Okay. Next one up. This is in Psalms chapter one. It says, "Blessed is a man that walk not in the way of the, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers that bring forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither." And whatsoever he do shall prosper. So when you're meditating on God's word, not only does it keep your mind centered on him, it gives you peace, it gives you clarity, doesn't you're not led to confusion, but also God will make you prosperous. You're gonna be blessed. Okay, so meditating God's word. Also, one last thing too, it helps you fight against your flesh because you're being filled with your spirit through the word. Okay, let's go, let's go. This is how to meditate on God's word. So I came up with some 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 things that a lot of us you know struggle with, like with hope. Maybe we're losing hope. Maybe we're lacking peace. Uh, maybe we, we want to know more about Jesus, be filled with Jesus inside of us, the spirit of Christ. Or maybe we're going through worry. Uh, maybe we want to overcome fear, overcome doubt. Uh, maybe you're going through a weakness, a weakness in your life, spiritually weak. Uh, or uh, you, you, know, want, you want to abide in the Holy Spirit more. You want to be filled more with the spirit. Uh, or maybe you're going through, you know, confusion, you know, confusions of the enemy. And you want to, be, you want to gain that clarity. You want to gain that understanding. You want to gain that wisdom. Or you want to understand the power of God. Okay, so these are the things that I broke down. I'm going to be going over at least like 50 scriptures from this video. So let's go, let's go. If you haven't already, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel. Liking the video reaches out more in the algorithm so more people go watch this video. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over is hope. Okay, so I have Romans chapter 12, verse 12. And you, you can, there's, this is not just the only verses you can find to meditate to, by the way. Um, if you guys want, you guys could screenshot it too. Okay, yeah, there you go. Uh, this is just some things that I found. Okay, so I'm just making that very clear. This is, this is the hundreds of verses you can find on hope. All right, so the first one I like is Romans chapter 12, verse 12. It says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue to instant prayer. So when you're meditating, right, on this verse, you can literally be in bed and just have that uh, have that verse center. Or you could at least repeat it. You could repeat it out of your mouth too. Okay, you don't have to do that, but you could just, you know, remember that in your mind and constantly remember it. You can remember entire scripture or it could just be a simple verse. Okay. Next one up is now that the God of hope fill you with joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Okay. And then Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil and to give you an unexpected end. So whenever you're losing hope, you want to combat that with the word of God. You want to combat with scripture and you can help, you know, helps you meditate and keep your mind on him so you don't lose hope. You don't lose the faith. Okay. Also, this is in Romans chapter 8, verse 24. It says, we, we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, what does he hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we, and then with patience, we wait for it. Okay. So let's get, let's go, man. Man, I love meditating. It's very simple. And like I said, guys, this is what's going to keep your mind centered on God. Okay. You're not going to keep your mind centered on the world. Okay. Next one up is peace. Okay. Two Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. By all means, the Lord be with you. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, 
that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be a good cheer, I have overcome the world. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, For be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, For thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares of you. Okay, Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Okay, so that's that's hope and that's peace. Now, let's say if you want to, you know, be full a little more about Jesus, learn more about Jesus and what he did. Okay, um, now you could you could meditate on what he did when they were crucifying him and uh, how he and through his blood we were made. He washed us through our sins through his blood. There's many ways you can meditate on Jesus. Okay, but these are some scriptures. I have. This is one John chapter four, verse 19. It says we love him because he lo he first loved us. This is talking about Jesus. Okay. Uh, Romans chapter five verse eight says, "But God condemned His uh, condemned His love towards us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us." So you could just meditate on this type of stuff, this type of scriptures, and it will definitely help you out on your walk with Christ. Okay, uh, John chapter six verse twenty eight to twenty nine says, "Then said they unto Him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God?" Jesus answered and said unto him, "This is the work of God that ye believe on Him who He has sent." Okay, you believe on Jesus who we believe on uh, Jesus who has sent. Okay, next one up is Matthew chapter twenty-two, verse thirty-seven to thirty-nine. Jesus said unto him, "If thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it: Thou shalt love the neighbor as thyself." Okay, this is a good one too. This is in Isaiah chapter fifty-three, verse five. It says, "But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and he, and through his stripes we are healed." Okay, these are the type of uh, scriptures to meditate on, man. I'm telling you, it's going to help you. John chapter 15, verse 9 to 11. As a father have loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you if you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that, that by joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be filled. Okay. And like I said, there could, there could be many other things I could be putting. I could be putting, uh, meditating on faith, meditating on joy, but... You know, I'll, I'll, obviously I don't have much room, but yeah. Anyways, next one up is worry, okay? Uh, whenever you're warned, the Bible says you're warned about certain things, right? This is, in, Jesus says that in Matthew chapter um, 6, verse 30, uh, 33, he says, but first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. Every time in life where I was going through a flat line, I was going through a time where, you know, I was questioning my faith. Um, I don't do this no more because my faith now is strong, but you know, in the beginning stages, uh, or, you know, just going through flat lines, stuff like that. Y'all know how it is. I always meditate on Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33. Seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. So that means I have to better my spirit. I have to apply apply my faith, you know, really be in the faith so I can produce works to do to do the works of God, to do the works of the kingdom of God. So that's the one thing that I learned about when it comes to warring. You know, you want to seek God's kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be added into. Next one up is Luke chapter one, verse 37 says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Okay, so with God, nothing is impossible. And in John chapter 14, verse 27 says, peace, I, I, li I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you. Not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay, so whenever you're going through worry, like I said, there's many, there's hundreds of verses you can meditate on. But these are some of the things that um, came to my mind to help, so it can help you guys. If you guys are ever going through any type of worry, uh, need some peace, need some hope. So yeah, I hope this one can help you guys out. Next one up is overcoming fear. A lot of the times, a lot of people are feel, they want to preach the word of God, but they have the spirit of fear in them. They're afraid of what their friends and families might say or outsiders, naysayers. And best believe, if you're going to preach the word of God, you got to prepare for scoffers. You got to prepare for false accusers. You got to prepare for the children of Satan to try to stop you from doing that. Because when you're preaching the word of God, you are saving souls. You are planting seeds in people's minds. The devil doesn't like that. So he's going to use his children. He's going to use his minions to get you to stop to do the work of God. Okay, so this is overcoming fear. This is Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Psalm 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 says, The fear of the man bring forth a snare, but he who puts his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Okay, so 
There you go. I mean, the scriptures on scripture. A lot of us, a lot of the times, we might battle with fear. Satan might be getting the best of us. You know, we might be, you know, losing, lo losing hope, losing peace. You know, uh, you know, the fear, the doubt, all that type of stuff. But best believe, when you're meditating on, you're going to overcome. And Jesus overcame the devil through the word of God. That's how you can do the same thing too. Okay, uh, Proverbs chapter nineteen, verse twenty-three says, "The fear of the Lord tend to life, and he that have it shall be satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil." Ooh, the fear. Now, if you're gonna have fear, you're gonna have to, you have to have the fear of God in you. Okay, not the fear of the world, the fear of the devil. No, the fear of God. Okay, so this is overcoming the 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 spirit of fear when it comes to fearing the world and fearing what people think about you. So I'm not talking about the fear of God. Make that very clear. Okay, now next one is overcoming doubt. Overcoming doubt. So this is in Proverbs chapter three, verse five to eight. It says, "Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marvel to thy bones." Okay, so fearing fearing God adds days into your life. Okay, and wisdom too as well. We all should be meditating also on wisdom. Uh, Proverbs chapter eight. That's a really good verse. You guys want wisdom? Meditate on Proverbs chapter 8. That whole chapter is talking about wisdom. So, yeah, definitely. That's a good one. Okay. Next one up is when it comes to doubt, the Bible says if any man lacks wisdom. Ooh, I just, crazy. I didn't even know this is the next one. But the Bible says if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men freely. Okay. Who gives to all men freely. So, if you're lacking wisdom, pray and ask God for it. Now, when you ask God for wisdom, you don't want to be, you know, is God going to give me? You don't want to, you know, because the, 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 the verse says in... Um, the next verse says in uh, verse six to seven it says that if any man lacks, uh, if any man when he asks, he lacks in faith. That man shall not receive nothing in the Lord. So when you ask God for wisdom, you got to wholly believe a hundred percent that He's going to give you what you ask for. Okay. Next one up is Matthew chapter fourteen verse thirty one says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth His hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, thou little faith, where did thou not doubt? Okay. So when you have faith, there's no room for doubt. There's no room for fear. There's no need. There's no room for worry. Now, if that does, if that spirit does creep up on you, you, your power is meditating. Meditating, man. That's the power when it comes to overcoming these type of things. That's why this video, is, this video is very important for all believers. So I hope all you guys, all you children of God are hitting the like button. Get this video out. Okay, next one up is Matthew chapter 21, verse 20. Um, chapter 21, verse 21 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do which is done to the fig tree, but also into the, into this, ye shall say into this mountain, Be thou as moved, and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. So when you have faith, you can say to one mountain, move here, and it will move, man. You will be able to move mountains. Okay, so best believe, when, it, when once you know these scriptures, especially when you're meditating on it, there's no room for fear. There's no room for, there's no room for fear, doubt, worry, no room for that. Okay. Next one up is weakness. And best believe we all in life, everyone gets weak. Even Jesus felt weak. Okay. We're all, you know, we have a fleshly body that we're in, even though our spirit, our spirit man is getting renewed every single day and getting stronger every single day for those who are being obedient. But at the end of the day, you know, we all fall short of the glory of God. And remember, Jesus felt weak too. So that means you're going to feel, feel weak too. But when you're feeling weak, Here's some scriptures to go for you guys. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is significant for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most glad gladly, therefore, will I glorify in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Okay. It even says that um, if, if you feel tempted, God will provide a way out. That's in Corinthians. Okay. So best believe when you're weakness, God will provide a way out for you. Okay. Next one up is... Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that man ought to always pray and to faint not. Okay, so um, whenever you're going through a weakness in life, best believe you want to combat that with the scriptures. Our next one up is abiding in the Holy Spirit. This is what all of us need. We need to have the spirit of truth in us and not the spirit of error, okay? When you read the Bible, you want you have to believe the whole thing. You can't pick and choose, oh, I want to follow this verse. Oh, this verse is the Old Testament, so I don't want to apply that to my life. You don't want to do that. You want to believe in the whole Bible, all the prophets, all the messengers, okay? Or the Son of God, believe it all. Don't pick and choose what verses to follow, okay? So when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, Okay, and it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, self-control, and meekness. Okay, so 
you want to you want to abide in those things okay remember love joy peace patience gentleness goodness and faith meekness humble and self-control okay so abide in the holy spirit next one up is if you guys haven't been baptized check this out this is in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 it says then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy spirit Ooh, that's a good one, man. Also, next one up, it says, people ask, you know, Mark, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? This is what Jesus says. Luke chapter 11, verse 13, it says, if you then, being evil, know how to good, give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Okay, so if you ask God for the Holy Spirit, he will pour it down on you, okay? You have to ask God for it. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, Ooh, there is freedom with the Spirit of the Lord. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me, both in, Jer um, in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and into all the uttermost part of the earth. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so there y'all go, man. Abide in the Holy Spirit. Also, um, it says this in uh, Ezekiel, that God will give you a new heart and a new spirit. So uh, you want to, you know, abide in the Holy Spirit? It's, remember, accepting the spirit of truth in you, okay? Don't reject the lies and accept the truth, okay? Next one up is confusion, okay, confusion. So God says that he is not the author of confusion. So when you're going through confusion, just know God is not the author of that, okay? Are you seeking truth, okay? Are you, are you applying the knowledge? Are you reading the Bible for yourself, okay? So always understand that when you're going through confusion, or you, you just feel confused, should I, or let's say if you're in a relationship, should I stay with him? You know, all these type of things because God shows you. If you have the Holy Spirit, God will show you. Okay, so the God is not the author of confusion. So this is the first one to meditate when you're going through confusion. Okay, so um, also it says in John 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, it says that test the spirits and try the spirits for many false prophets have gone into the world. Okay, so if you're questioning if, you know, is this person right for me? The Bible says to test the spirits, but how can you test someone's spirit if you if you're battling with demonic spirits? Okay, so you must have the Holy Spirit to test someone's spirit because you, the heart is deceitful. If you're just trusting your heart, the Bible says the heart is deceitful. Okay, so next one up is the power of God. Okay, the power of God. This is in uh, Exodus chapter fourteen, verse fourteen. It says the Lord shall fight for you, and He shall hold your peace. There's a lot of enemies who came against me. And the most high God fought for me and I hold my peace. I don't have to go back and forth, okay? My God is my rock and my salvation and my shield. He's a buckler to all who walk upright. Uh, Psalm chapter 28, verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart my, my heart trusts in him and I and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11 says, Thine, O Lord, is thy great and thy power and thy glory, and thy victory, and thy majesty, for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is thy kingdom, O Lord, thou hast exalt as head above all. Okay, so this is how do you meditate on the word of God. This is hope, peace, Jesus, worry, overcoming fear, overcoming doubt, weakness, abiding in the Holy Spirit, maybe going through confusion, and the power of God. Now, there's many verses you can meditate on, so whatever that comes into your heart, whatever it comes to your spirit, whatever God pours into your heart, your spirit to meditate on, or maybe, you know, you just want to find whatever verses to meditate on for me it's whatever whatever i'm going through in life or it could just be you know um something that's going to fill me up with hope you know something that's going to fill me up with peace or whatever whatever the case may be you know so maybe it might be proverbs maybe it might be romans might be um ezekiel genesis you know genesis chapter 50 verse 20 okay so it, it really depends on the day so this video is how to meditate on the word of god if you guys wish you can screenshot out for the scriptures and if you guys made this far um make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel and if you feel any need any comments or anything i'm missing out feel free to leave in the comment section below i love you guys so much god bless you all i'm out peace